and how to anchor our relationships on the right basis. The most important relationship we should all think about is the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have we established it correctly? Is it built upon the right basis? Because if it's built upon the right basis, then everything else we want to discuss about the one we want to marry and the laws that will regulate that and the criteria that which we will apply will be correct and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy with us and inshallah as a consequence of that the people around us will also be happy with us which comes to my final point we can kick out the misery we can kick out <coughs> the difficulty we can kick out the heartache just by following five <coughs> simple steps and brothers get out their notepads and five people say mashallah is that easy is it? five simple steps number one Islam provides rules to regulate relationships and that is called marriage I know we all know this but it's important for that to be reinforced in our mind there is no other legal relationship between a man and a woman but marriage very fundamental number two Islam has rules that are there to encourage the interaction between men and women in order to pursue marriage. But don't take that literally. Islam isn't about that you don't meet each other. You just wake up one morning and you get told by your dad, she's, you get married to her. Who? Oh, your third cousin from the fourth family, from the third, no, no, from this village. When... It's not like that. Islam encourages and has rules to make sure that you can meet so you can get to know each other but this knowing each other has rules it doesn't mean you can get to know each other in seclusion because the hadith of Rasulullah if two people, man and a woman who are not known to each other are alone who will be the third person? Jazakallah khair yeah, don't say George Bush, say John <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, Shaitan <laughs> So Islam has rules to encourage the interaction between men and women in a manner so we get to know each other. Absolutely. But not in a manner which leads to what happens today. Where people are alone and anything can happen. And who do you prove who did what? He touched me. She consented. How do you know? He made an advance. No, I didn't. But how do you prove it? You can't, can you? Islam throws all of these issues away by saying, here is the way you get to know each other. That when you meet, there should be a third person there. Can you speak over the phone? Yes, as long as you get permission from your parents. Can you email? Yes, as long as you get permission from your parents. And what you discuss should be within a certain framework. You don't have a license just to ask any question that you like. But within a certain framework. It builds a premise. Number three, Islam has rules which allows us, allows us, to understand the criteria which we're going to use. And what's the criteria? It's a very natural criteria. What's the first thing that naturally attracts you to a woman? Jazakallah khair. Other brother, no, no, mashallah, it's her intellect. I mean, how do you see that in a woman? <laughs> <laughs> mashallah, her head is this big, oh, she's very, mashallah, my, my kind of girl. Yeah? You don't say that, do you? Her head is here and the rest of the body is like this, Marsha. I love her intellect. I must. No, no, you don't say that. The first thing you naturally look to is what? The beauty. Very natural. Very, very natural. And therefore it's a natural aspect to consider. But it's not the only aspect that we need to consider. And more importantly, it's not the most important aspect that we need to consider. And that's very important. Islam has given us Four principal characteristics that we should look for, which are what? One, beauty, naturally. You want to enjoy being in the company of the one that you admire her beauty for. Absolutely natural. Number two, the one who has uh, wealth. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> who needs to work, mashallah, that, that role player, I don't need to work, she's going to look after me. Yeah? Number three, lineage, that she's from a good family. And her credentials have been very well established. Very difficult to do in this society. Why? Because we live in a very individualistic society. You don't even know who your neighbor is. In fact, you don't even know that they're dead. <laughs> Nowadays. Yeah. You go, oh, what's that stink? Been there for two weeks, a rotting body, because no one cares about their neighbor. If you go to the Muslim world, how everyone knows each other. 
And everyone knows about the family. So you can ask, who is this person? They'll give the complete family tree. All the way back 300 years. Yeah, I know. Subhanallah. Lineage. So three criteria that we already have. Beauty, wealth, status. And the fourth one is what? Taqwa. Piety. And Rasulullah said, the ones who the best to get married is based upon taqwa, piety. Because the first three, there's no guarantee. Beauty comes, beauty goes. Wealth happens, wealth disappears. Rizq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Status can never be a guarantee. You could have a corrupted family, but that individual could be pure. Likewise, you could have a pure family, and that individual could be corrupt. <coughs> if somebody has taqwa, and that's deep, that will be there forever. So we've got a criteria. It's not skin deep, it's deeper. It's deeper. Something which is permanent. And the fifth point is Islam has given us a framework. A framework to ease the financial, the social burden. That we should actually get the support of our family in order to get married. It's not easy to think about. You can imagine going home and saying, Dad, I found a really nice girl at university. What kind of response do you tend to get? <laughs> it's like, subhanAllah, you heard a bear somewhere. You know what was going on? You find sometimes the biggest obstacle in trying to fulfill your Islamic requirements tends to be culture, tends to be family. Which is on my final remark, final two points. Which is what? That sometimes we believe Islam doesn't give us an answer. And the reason why is for the following reasons. One, because we don't see it within our own family. And we don't sometimes see it within our own community. Because we don't see it, and we hear it all the time, Islam, 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 we get confused. Number two, the bright lights, the rasmataz, things like Valentine's Day, is appealing. It becomes an easy alternative. Number three, we genuinely, as a Muslim community, and as Muslims, we sometimes have ignorance of what Islam actually says about what we can and what we cannot do. And until you plug that gap, we can never be sure what we're doing is in the right way. And the fourth point about the, about the significance, we need this huge onus upon us because if we don't get this right, like I mentioned at the beginning of my talk, it sounds very funny to give these examples, but at the end of the day, we will suffer individually in the dunya. But more importantly, each one of us will suffer in the akhirah when there is no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I do the one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of us end up in this camp. And for those who want to know how I got married, as a simple way, not the, the so-called traditional route, which is through the family, but it went through the same process. Which is, and here's a good piece of advice for brothers who want to get married. Give a talk. Yeah. I, was at, you know, I was at university, gave a talk at university, and obviously in, the, in this talk, men on one side, women on the other side. And as you know, when you're giving a talk, you naturally look around, sincerely, you look around, because you want to engage the audience. And I just found my, my potential wife in the audience. And what I did, I went to a friend of mine, uh, at the end said, oh, oh brother, subhanAllah, I've seen this sister, I'm quite interested in wanting to get to know her. Just happened to be her cousin. <laughs> yeah? And he's at uh, six foot five, mashallah, as well. So, and that opened the door to then going through the process of trying to get to know her, contacting her family, and having to overcome all the practical difficulties that we face. Practical difficulties. I'm not saying it's easy following the Islamic method because we no longer have an Islamic society or Islamic values which govern and manage that relationship. I had to go through hell and heaven, as they say, to get married. First question I was asked by people is that, what color is he, what color is she? Because my wife is from Sudan. And for, I know not, not many people here probably know Urdu, Punjabi, but my <laughs> friend said to me, is she Kali? Meaning, is she black? Hold on a minute, what's that got to do with the price of bread? What's the relevance of that? I couldn't care she was green and from planet Mars. <laughs> As long as she is, head is not that big, man. As long as she, you know, I'm angry for her intellect, brothers, obviously, yeah? You're looking for certain things, aren't you? And the point is, these obstacles will always exist. And that's the test for us. And when we have that test, it shouldn't deter us. Rather, what should it do? It should bolster us. It should actually motivate us to overcome the tests that are in front of us, to make sure we mate, we maintain, and we keep our most important relationship. And that most important relationship isn't actually with our potential wife. The most important relationship actually is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we get that right, inshallah everything else will follow.